Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community. I'm Mary-Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with Karen Charles, who is an event specialist with Husqvarna Viking. And today, Karen, you're going to be showing us how to get started making easy landscape quilts, Absolutely. especially if we've never done it before, like I've never done one. <laughs> and so I'm really excited to see how we're going to do this. And you, we're going to start out with some beautiful samples here. Well, I've got a, brought a couple of them with me. I think the, one of the important things is when you're starting is try and keep it small. Okay. These don't have to be full size, you know, large quilts. If you start small, you can go through the process, find out what you like and discover different ways of doing it. It's also easier to find your fabric and choose little pieces. This is a very messy one. And we're gonna mm. go into how to do this kind of thing afterwards um, towards the end. But I just want to give you an idea. The, the sky was painted. I painted ah, it with okay. Sukaneko inks, which gives a little bit of a unique look. Uh, but it was really a very messy thing. Sukaneko inks, you can make it very like a watercolor type of thing. But there's really only five pieces of fabric in there. Okay. So we're not talking having to put, you know, 15 different choices. It's just simple, small shapes that I just hand cut with, you know, total abandon. And somebody could work their way up to this level of embellishment. Absolutely. And this is, this is really simple. This is another one that's very simple. It has maybe seven or eight pieces of fabric. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, the stitching that you see is free motion that was added afterwards, but the basic fabric pieces are put down with a straight stitch and then a satin stitch. And uh, some of the ribbon work and everything is done, um, adds a little bit more embellishment mm -hmm. to it. And here again, this one is six pieces of fabric. Um, it looks a little bit different because you've got a lot of extra free motion uh, stitching that's kind of adding the grass and some flowers and the trees and um, when we get toward the end of this segment you'll see how that was done. But I just also want to mention the um, decorative stitching you did like you did mm -hmm. some decorative stitching around the edge there around the binding just on two sides. And yeah just so you know nice. why it's I did it on two sides because people don't think of really embellishing their pieces especially quilt work like that uh, but I wanted to for everybody to be able to see how some simple little technique like that can really add a lot to it. This quilt was put together uh, without any binding around the edge. I, when I was ready and done, I put the back on, sewed it and flipped it like an envelope, and I felt it needed something. So I've added a cross stitch, um, decorative stitch at the nice. edge, and along the edge is a Spanish hem, hem stitch. And you're sewing off the edge of the fabric and it's creating that little edge to it. It works with a special foot called that Spanish hem stitch, but it's amazing the detail it gives. Yeah, and really and it nice. makes me want to go back in and finish it. But I really I do like think it. it's it's kind of interesting yeah. to see how some little thing like that can make such a big difference Absolutely. in the way something. So let's take a look at these. Now this is again a simple landscape, very easy. Uh, the only difference here is that the pieces are actually pieced in like they would a traditional quilt. Um, but it, as far as kind of adding a, a level of interest, it really is just very simple pieces of fabric. I haven't really gone to a great deal of trouble to match anything. All of these pieces have been mostly free-handed. Um, and the curves mm -hmm. are very simple so they can be piece, pieced mm -hmm. in. And the same thing with this one. This one reminds me of Lake Champlain where I live uh -huh. up in Vermont. And um, you can see how just changing the night sky gives a completely different look to it. Mm -hmm. And I've started to do a little bit of piecing, but in this case, there's no backing behind here. I'm at the point where I'm gonna be ready to put backing in, and I will do more free motion quilting. Everything will be kind of finished up at that point. Mm -hmm. But I just want you to see what would happen. This is about as far as I go. If I'm gonna do a lot of heavy, heavy embellishments, I won't add the borders on until later because that can, tends to move in the fabric, yeah. so it kind of gets a little distorted. Yeah. So I'll do the heavy embellishing, but when that's all done, then it's ready for the backing I see. and the batting. Okay. okay. Well, let's take a look at how we actually do this. So this is about as simple as it gets. If you have never done landscape before, try and find a fabric that gives you the feeling of a real sky. That simplifies things, and you don't have to really uh, worry about it, what it looks like. Um, the next point 
I have, most of the time I'll work with a piece of batting underneath and I will build it on the batting. Okay. Because then it gives me that texture as I'm sewing mm -hmm. and everything's all connected. And to put down another piece, this is just a freehand cut and I can place it where I want and add different fabrics. At some point, maybe I decide I like it or I don't like it or maybe I just want to turn it over and use the wrong side yeah. because it looks better. Um, batiks are very forgiving like that because they can, both sides can be nice. So you can, you've got a lot of uh, flexibility with a batik. So. The thing to keep in mind when you're building a landscape is the fabric that is going to be farthest away, it's going to be the mountains that are farther away or the lake, whatever's in the distance, is generally going to be a softer, grayer color mm -hmm. than what comes closer to you. The closer it comes, the brighter the fabric gets and the stronger the pattern comes. I've got a very strong fabric, it is darker, it's a bit overwhelming in there, so mm. I probably wouldn't use it like that, but maybe I could cut it down and put something in here like right. this and tuck it down. Now, when I started this, I didn't have to have the fabric down where the water is, and I'm not actually using this. I will probably cut it away when I actually put in the water, and if I wanted to use this particular piece, I would cut it off and lay it on top. Whatever is in the distance is going to be first, and then you're going to layer it in that manner. I have a piece of water here that I'm going to put down to give you an idea. And the reason I'm not using this piece of water is when you're working with a landscape, whatever is in the sky, if your sky is a very bright blue and it's got clouds, that's probably going to be reflected in the water. So to, this is kind of looks nothing like the sky. Right. Whereas maybe if I go into a fabric like this, that's got some of the color. Mm -hmm. I'll show you how I folded it up there. This looks exactly like the sky, a bit too much for me because I see all the clouds. But if I was just to put a couple of pleats in. Ripples. Ripples in there. Mm -hmm. And they're all going to get sewn down. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of play around with this until you get a look that is a little more pleasing to you. You can see the cloud is reflected here. And there's also some white yeah. reflected here. And you get that feeling that it's real water. Mm -hmm. Um, afterwards, it's going to be stitched on and it's not going to have that same exact look. But at that point, my landscape's done. There's no doubt in your mind that it's a landscape. Right. And, that it, and it could actually exist, which is even more important. Mm -hmm. This is kind of what we're going for. Here, I've just put the border together. You can see it's a relatively simple landscape. And I've sewn it together. Get pieces out of there. Quilter's As an envelope, yeah, absolutely. And Right now, the next part is going to be attaching the fabric to the sky and then doing a satin stitch on top of it. Okay. So we're at the point here where I've sewn with a straight stitch down these two pieces. And I'm going to do the next one just to give you an idea how that goes. And I can, until the point where they're sewn down, I can lift them up, move them around, change my mind about where I want something to be. And let's say we're going to put this here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come over to my sewing machine and talk about setting up your sewing machine. Okay. There are a couple of things that you do when you are working um, any kind of quilting, piecing, it doesn't matter what, is, you know, what kind of thing you're doing. I will always set my machine so the needle is going to stop down in the machine. Okay. The machine I'm sewing on today is a Husqvarna Viking Sapphire 960Q. And it has a, a button so that the needle, when you sew, will automatically stop down, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. But it also has a sensor system which lifts up the foot when it stops the needle down so that you can pivot. And you can just set that. It happens automatically. It happens the automatically. sensor okay. system is just part of the way that it's developed. If you have a machine that doesn't have the sensor, you'll notice back here there's no press foot lift. Mm -hmm. If you have a machine that has a, a lift to it, you will have to stop, lift your foot up to pivot. Right. With the sensor system, as you sew, when you stop, it stops down, and now nice. I can pivot. So you get a lot of easier sewing. Mm -hmm. And um, it tends to keep your fabric a little flatter when you're going. So this is the only, so let's sew it down. And don't be afraid of stopping more often. Nobody says you have to go the whole line. Yeah. I like to stop. Readjust. Readjust. And it, it makes everything sit nice and flat. And I'm going to show you this last little bit. And at the end, the Sapphire 960Q has scissors. So I cut my thread top and bottom. And 
You'll notice here how I've left some fabric. Mm -hmm. When I'm sewing this down, it's not important that I get really close to the edge because afterwards I can come in and trim it back. And so you don't have to be quite so close to the edge when you're doing it. It makes it a lot quicker. And so that straight stitch is almost a design element in itself if you make a different decision, like, no, I Absolutely. want this hill to slope more yep. sharply at this yep. point. Yep, you can totally recontrol it. Right there. And, and that's what I like. The one thing that you do need to keep in mind when you're developing a landscape is there is one rule that you can't break. Okay. The landscape where the water meets the mountains always has to be parallel to the top of your sky. Okay. If you put this in like this, yeah. you can tell there's a problem. So Getting a little surreal. And that's you know, having that up there kind of gives you that idea. And it's amazing how unaware we can be of that. So one thing that I will always do is make sure at this point when I'm putting this down that it's basically parallel mm -hmm. to that top line mm -hmm. before I go and do that. Mm -hmm. So once I've got them all stitched down, I'm ready for my satin stitch. And we do have all of our stitches up here. Uh -huh. So we're ready to choose our satin stitch. I'm going to go to the B menu and select stitch two. And this is a true satin stitch. It's not a zigzag that's moved in. A true satin stitch will go straight across and then and down. Uh -huh. If you were to select a zigzag, it's always got that right. curve to it. Right. So a true satin stitch is beautiful. The tension's automatically been changed for that stitch. So I don't have to go in and do anything for that. And the only thing that I might do is change the width of it. And I'm gonna sew a little bit and then I'll stop. And you can see how tight it is. Yes. So what I want you to see is the satin stitch is changing. As I'm going, I can change the width of it and make it narrower and wider. When I'm stitching behind, I will use a narrow one. And then when I'm stitching uh, the closer pieces to the front, then I will use a wider one. And I'm just going to go back down there. And I'm not going to finish that. I just wanted to get an idea of how mm -hmm. the satin stitch. Mm -hmm. But see how it changes from a wider stitch to mm -hmm. a narrower stitch. And it adds a lot of dimension to it. Here I used a darker color. Here I used a lighter color. It's going to depend upon the look you want, thread colors you use. Here I'm just trying to show you an extreme so you can see the stitching on the machine. We are ready for doing some free motion. And I've started a little bit here just to give you an idea. So now that we've talked about the satin stitch, let's talk about how to set up our machine for free motion quilting. Okay. Because that's where it gets to be fun. And if you are not used to doing a lot of free motion quilting and you're, you know, having trouble figuring out um, stippling and all of that kind of stuff, this is a great way to get going. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing to consider is what foot you're going to use. If you have... Um, a traditional machine, um, you're going to be using a foot that is going to have a spring to it mm -hmm. because that's going to allow the foot to bounce as the, um, as the needle's going up and down. Mm -hmm. If you have a machine that's got a sensor system, right now the machine I'm working with, uh, the Sapphire, has a sensor system. So I can work with a stippling foot that doesn't have a spring with it. It's considerably smaller. It's considerably smaller. Yeah. And your visibility is actually much better mm -hmm. because the whole spring in the side is not in the way. Um, most people are going to work with the spring because that's what they have, so that's what I'm going to set right. up with today. Okay. So when I come over to my machine, I'm going to take off my foot and my ankle. It's one of the very few feet on a Husqvarna Viking that you need to take off the ankle. Most of them slide on and off very easily. and. If you are a machine at home and you're trying to set up and you've got your foot like this, many times you'll find it's a little easier if you put the needle down into that down position. This yes. bar needs to go on top of the needle bar and it's going to set into position much easier if you just lower the needle. And then you're going to screw it in. The other thing you're going to need to do to set up your machine is to drop your feed teeth. Now, on our machine, the sapphire will automatically drop the feed teeth when I go in and oh, set it nice. up for free motion. And a second here. Right here, we have a button that sets it up either for free motion floating, which is the foot without the spring, or for free motion spring action. And that's the one we're going to select today. You hear the feed teeth, they dropped mm -hmm. automatically. The other thing 
that would be important is if you have a machine, uh, a, an extension table like this, it makes a big difference yeah. to be able to add that. And I also have a sew slip that I usually put on top, and we'll get that out later. And it just makes the surface that much more it's slick. slick. Yes, absolutely. So you have less friction. And so you when you're moving well. your fabric, it's, it doesn't matter so much with something small like this, but once you get into bigger pieces, it can make a big difference yeah. if you have that on there. So that's all I need to do when I'm setting up my machine for free motion quilting. I have it set on a straight stitch. There is no stitch length or stitch width. Every time I move the machine and I put my foot on the pedal, the stitch is going to be selected by me and how fast or slow mm -hmm. I move it around. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And But this is where the fun creative stuff comes in. When I move it around, I'm really getting a sense of depth, but I'm also learning how to do free motion quilting. Right. It's just not as intimidating as having to do a perfect stippling stitch. Right. This is something that's meant to be messy. You can change your thread colors. Right now I've got a green on here. I might use some different shades of green. I could cut my thread and start somewhere different, yeah. or I could come in. I'm going to come in from the side here. Now, if I was to use blue fabric on my water, uh, blue thread, you wouldn't be able to see it. So I'm going to do this with the green thread just so you can see it better. Okay. But really, there's no green water in my life, and I'm sure <laughs> the hope that it's not in yours. But if I was going to stitch water, I would be doing a different process. Instead of up and down, it would be going across. Beautiful. Isn't that amazing? It's you great. get that feeling of yeah. it being water with those little stitches. Well, this whole tutorial it makes it very unintimidating just to get started, That's jump what I'm in, hoping. audition those fabrics, pull from your scrap bin. I think I'm going to go home and make one tonight. Oh, good. I can't I've wait been to inspired. see the results. Thank you so and much. I hope for you go home and try it too. Yes, Everybody thank you else. for sharing this with us, and we look forward to your next tutorial with us. Thank you. We hope you will join us again next time. Take care. Bye bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.